Hey everybody, we are back with your Monday night tip. I hope you guys have been doing great. Paul, you're you're back out on the road. Where are you at right now? I'm in uh, beautiful Buffalo, New York. Beautiful Buffalo, yes, yeah. on the road with uh, Frozen, right? That's right, yeah. Um, I, I feel really bad for the, the folks down in uh, New York City area and New Jersey and stuff, but somehow we um, this part of the state was unscathed. So I, I got here in the midst of that whole storm, but uh, we're, we're doing fine. Well, nice great. to be back in the saddle again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, today, everybody, we, we were talking and we wanted to discuss the one magic question that will supercharge your trumpet playing improvement. And uh, it's kind of an interesting question um, because it's something I think that a lot of people don't um, take into consideration when they play. Uh, I have a talent agency just to give you some background. And so I'm often in meetings, whether they're Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, whatever. And often there's a number of people involved, you know, event planners, tech people, this and that. So I'm there taking notes. And a lot of times it's almost a complete waste of time for me. So I've learned that there's a, a great question that I can I can always ask before I go into a meeting so that I get something out of it. And that question is, what outcome do I want to get out of this? So that's the question that I think we need to pose uh, when we go in to practicing, right? Is that do you do you uh, do this as well, Paul? I, absolutely. Yeah, I um, I'm not a big fan of practicing myself. I'm I, I like to say that I'm lazy. Other people say, no, you're not lazy. You're just focused and and efficient in your use of time. And and maybe both are true. Um, and I think maybe the efficient use of time was born out of being lazy. But anyway, I, I like to come up with one thing that I, I know that I'm sort of either deficient in or that I've been letting slide a little bit and and try and focus on that one thing and it really does help accomplish a lot more in a shorter period of time and i feel like um once i've got that done i i'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed and i can go on to the next thing right now i know we've had this conversation a lot of times but we we both like to practice when we can in different different segments during the day you like optimally three uh, I've done three many times, uh, depending on my schedule. I'm kind of lazy. I like to do something in the morning and then maybe something in the late afternoon. And I like my evenings uh, free if I can have them free, unless I got something really pressing coming up. But for me, when I basically, let's say, let's say I have, let's say we break these into an hour segment uh, each time we practice. But I like to break my set my hour up into about 20 minutes ish segments and so for me like my very first thing that i like to do when i when i warm up is to really get everything moving right to get the vibration going to make playing as easy as i can so that's the goal of my first 20 minutes all the time uh, and that's just one goal and that's just my first goal so what do you do when you go and what kind of goals do you set for yourself? Well, for me, um, you know, let's just stay with uh, warming up for a, a minute. For me, what I do is I, I tell myself, OK, I'm not going to move on to the next part of my warm up until I feel um, like things are, are really ready to go. And uh, I, I always talk about enjoy the tingle or, uh, you know, savor the tingle, whatever, you know, when I first do my uh, beginning notes, you know, or, or the lead pipe buzzing, whatever you might decide to do. Um, for me, I don't know if everybody's the same way, maybe Bobby, um, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but I, I feel a certain amount of blood kind of flowing in there and tingling and, and all that. And so I'll play, you know, whatever few minutes or something put the horn down and feel that tingle and I'll just kind of, oh yeah, that feels good. And I know that it's rejuvenating and it's beneficial to my chops. So I'll just let that tingling subside. And when that's finished, then I move on to the next thing. So that's my goal for my warm up section. 
Right. No, I get that as well. Uh, unless I'm, uh, unless I happen to be really beat up or really just, I worked really hard the night before played or in a show like you are getting into now, like starting tomorrow, you have like some 12 hour days, right? So you yeah. got a lot of playing before that. So a lot of times, um, you know, we have sometimes to do damage control or get everything just like back down and, and working again. But I'm also talking about other times, types of, you know, goals for practicing. Like uh, as we get a little older, maybe our fingers don't move as fast as uh, they moved when they were when we were kids, right? So uh, I work on fingers, let's say, as part of uh, part of my practice routine. Not every day, but on some, on a lot of days. And some days, uh, when I say fingers, that's a very broad. Uh, generality, right? So that can mean a lot of things. So one of the things it could mean for me is just getting them to move as fast as I can. So if that that is the goal, getting them to move as fast as I can uh, in one of my ideas. So when I do that, I'll maybe play like Clark number one chromatics up a tritone and back down, you know, all the way throughout the every register of the horn. And the, the whole goal is just to get them to go as fast as I can. But there are other goals with fingers as well, right? Well, sure. Yeah, I have uh, two other things. I mean, I, I have a whole third valve uh, exercise that I love to do. And I know, Bobby, you and I have talked about that lots of times. I uh, both Bobby and I have done mar martial arts and I've broken this bone here at least three times and probably more more bones in there. So it's kind of sluggish just from that abuse. And uh, so my goal when I'm working on my third valve is to change all the one and two valve combinations to three. And I just concentrate on that. And I almost don't care uh, if I'm a little sloppy with my first and second valves, because I'm just concentrating on that one goal in mind. But what's interesting is it seems to clean up um, the speed and accuracy of my other two fingers as well. When I'm really concentrating on the one, the others kind of follow suit. Yeah, that's that's a great tip. That's a great idea. Some days I practice when it comes to to. Uh, fingering i practice in one key it, i might choose the key of b major or c sharp major or something so everything i'm going to do and transpose other exercises or maybe even etudes into these keys uh, and that that's really helpful for me but we can apply this to anything, you know, trying to learn, you know, if we're going to play um, in the upper register, we're working on our range, for instance, you know, what can your goal is not only your range, meaning how high you can play, but maybe how smoothly you can you can play within that range. Can you articulate, you know, articulate slur uh, in various combinations like I was doing some of that just this morning but then i pulled out some of those uh the high note etudes uh we've passed out here sure. and uh, working on some of those and i'm like wow boy i'm a little rusty on on certain articulations in certain keys also so that was my goal this morning was to play this one uh, etude top to bottom you know with as few mistakes and just smoothly and in, in tune and great sound and all that stuff as musically we'll say as possible that's a great goal um do you ever do this i i do i i'll pick a certain day in fact i've i've told my wife this um at various points like yeah you don't worry about closing the door or anything this is going to be my mezzo piano day and i'll warm up mezzo piano and i'll practice everything i do in that gentle kind of mezzo piano ish you know it might as i'm ascending it might get a little bit more strident or a little louder but i'm that the goal for that entire day is to focus just my chops to to get them to respond with the the least amount of air and the least amount of effort yeah that's cool i have to try that i haven't really spent an entire day working at one uh dynamic loud or soft but i do spend different parts of the day kind of regularly practicing at at extremes of volume just so I can touch on those areas because I think this is a part that a part of playing that is really neglected by a lot of people the vast majority of players tend to play in this mezzo forte ish area all the time or mf to f 
area, but we don't always touch on the lowest part and certainly don't always touch on the loudest part. And it's it's the same with registers as, as do you think? Ab absolutely, yeah. We, we need to touch on all of those things. And, you know, as you were talking a little bit earlier, I was thinking in, in some ways, um, touching on each of these things, if nothing else for me, is a reminder that Oh yeah, I better get my act together and 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 keep this ball also uh, in the air too because I, I don't want to be a one-trick pony. Um, or and uh, the notion of stupid chops. I know we've talked about that where, yeah, where you get into a run of some uh, a show, which you know that's mostly what I do these days. Um, and in the past, when I wasn't aware of stupid chops. Um, <clears throat> that's I, I would get to a point where that's all I could do was just play the show. So um, I want to touch on all of these things with the mindset that I have a single goal in mind um, each time I set out to practice, regardless of what that goal may be. And that goal changes daily. It, it changes. Um, I think, Bobby, that's a great idea. You have 20 minutes. You, you focus on something for 20 minutes, then you move on. That, that's great. Yeah, and I like to actually take a little break. It might it might just be five minutes, you know, I might go check an email, I might go check a text or something like that, and then I'm back to it. And uh, try to practice without distractions. I know we talked about that in a previous video, but I think it's, it's something that hampers our progress. So I think that question, you know, asking yourself, what's the outcome I want to get? during this next practice session uh, can be really beneficial and really helpful to you. So there's your tip, you know, thanks for being here with us and uh, hope you, you get something out of that and I hope you guys all have a great day.